Let me guess. One day, you disconnected your battery to service your car, and when you turned it back on, you quickly found out that you had a bunch of errors all over. Well, most likely, this thing is the culprit. So if you're as frustrated as I was, then make sure you watch this step-by-step -step video on how to get all this working again. Stay tuned. What is going on everyone? All right, so what we're doing right now is pretty self-explanatory. So the first thing we're gonna do is basically take this under panel off that's underneath the dash and it's just held under by three Phillips screws. All you have to do is pull it down a little bit, give it some uh, love, and it comes right out. Next, we have to take apart the hood latch, which is also held in by two screws. See right there, two Phillips, very easy. Next, you pull this little trim piece up, and then right underneath, you see it's clipped in. So just pull it, and after that, you just pull out the other piece also, and it's all held in by clips. So, if it's a little hard to do it, just do a pull. Once you get that out of the way, you'll see the FRM module, and now all you have to do is just pull out these clips. So these clips is pretty easy. You just have to push the tab and pull up. There you go. It's right out. Next, you have some two 10 millimeter screws, and then you got two more wires in the back. So to take the wires in the back, same thing, but get your 10 mil out and take it right out. And this is what the screws look like. Now getting the module out is kind of tricky. You kind of have to finagle it a little bit. Um, but once you move it out enough, then you can start pulling these clips out. Now these clips are similar to the ones in the front. Um, so all you have to do is push the tab. And once you push the tab, you can pull down the lever. And once you pull down the lever, then you can remove both of the clips. Just like that, we should be free. And now with the module removed, you can see what the clips look like. So very similar to the ones in the front. All right, so now it is inspection time. So what I'm doing right now is just taking apart the cover so you can see the inside. All it is is just clips all around. There should be about four total clips. But once you get this cover removed, then we're gonna go look around for anything that's burnt or out of place. But honestly, this one looks good. So the next part is trying to figure out how to fix this. Now, you can be one of the fortunate ones that got the limited time warranty. Um, the one I'm showing you on the screen right now is a eight year extension to 125,000 miles, but I believe it's actually been extended to 10 years, 150,000 miles. But when we searched it up, it was 10 years and unfortunately, since my car is a 2011 and when it was produced, I was just about a year short. So unfortunately, I could not use the limited warranty extension for this part. So the only other options I could do is either get a brand new one, get a refurbished one, or you can go the route that I actually did. And I went on eBay and I found someone that can service it for me for relatively cheap. So some of the service you see on here is around $85, $70, $60 but this guy accepted my offer at $40 and I definitely took a gamble, but he had good reviews and a lifetime warranty. So just in case this happens again, all I have to do is just pay for the shipping and I'll send it into him and then he will repair it for me. And that's it. I just bit the bullet and sent it off to a complete stranger, hoping he will return it. And luckily, you can see my dog, Charlie. <laughs> he did, um, yeah, got it back pretty fast. It was about a two day priority shipping, uh, me shipping there, shipping it back. And honestly, I wasn't even sure he even did anything. So we hopped back into the car and now we just start putting everything back up, hoping that this guy didn't just screw me over and that I just got scammed off eBay. But the moment of truth. Starting the car and oof, there you go. Windows work. Turn signals work, everything works. Uh, now for this next part, you do not need to watch it at all. This is just a visual aspect on how to put everything back into place and how to properly put it all in order, which started with the big trim piece on the side, which you just saw, 
and now I'm putting the under tray that goes underneath the steering column and once I kind of got that all fit into place I snapped in the last trim piece on the left side and now once you get that done you're able to put in all the Phillips screws and make sure when you put the hood latch back on that you notch it properly and there is a space for that to go on properly so you don't break the plastic piece again put the Phillips back on and now it drives as you can see there's a parking brake malfunction that's actually the original reason why I disconnected my battery to begin with and it caused a whole crap load of other issues where I was unable to drive my car so at least my car is driving everyone's happy and uh, now we can go and fix the actual original issue so be prepared for that video because that video will be coming out soon. But other than that, guys, I appreciate you guys all for watching. Hopefully, this has helped someone else that's in a similar situation. And that if you're able to get that extended warranty or find a cheap way to repair it through eBay, whatever it is, I hope you get to get it fixed. I hope I helped out in any ways. Let me know in the comments below if I did. And let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you want me to uh, cover and work on, either with BMWs, with Harleys, or finance and real estate. Whatever it is, let me know, guys. But again, thank you guys all for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.